This is a quick video on how to get around in a ceiling space. Ceiling spaces can be dusty environments and it's best to wear a P2 mask. Also, you want to make sure your footwear is durable and sturdy enough to get around. You'll notice much of the house is insulated and some parts above garages are not. Looking at the general construction of the ceiling, we have some plasterboard or jib. This stuff you do not want to walk on at all. It will break and you will fall through. Likewise, these bits of timber running under trusses are called battens and they are what secure the jib up to the frame of the house. So you do not want to stand on these either. They are simply nailed into the bottom of trusses or cords and they can collapse under your body weight. Sometimes there is some metal rondo in houses for the same purpose. These bigger beams are called trusses or bottom cords and they are strong enough to walk on. So when walking around on trusses or bottom cords, you want to make sure you maintain three points of contact. You will at times have to maneuver yourself through webbing between the top and bottom cords of the framework. So again, I would not stand on this piece of timber because it is just a batten that the jib is secured to. Almost anything covered in insulation is a no-go zone for walking. You want to step across each truss. Another piece of timber that is safe to walk on are top plates. Top plates are the top construction of the walls in the house. They're also different in terms of size with a batten. So I would not stand on this batten here because that's where the jib secures to. Although the jib in the corners secures to the top plates, they are structurally secure with a wall below them. You'll find commonly that services drop down through the middle of top plates, such as power, data, plumbing, drainage, gas, AC. So you want to look out for these and avoid standing on them if you're walking on top plates. Always place insulation back where it was originally from. Things to look out for include downlights. Here is a downlight. Do not stand on top of it or put any weight or pressure on it because it will break the ceiling underneath it and then you'll have to replace the ceiling and potentially replaster and paint it. Here is some ducting. You do not want to stand on ducting, crush it or compromise it in any way. This ducting here is from a bathroom fan but it's also used for range hoods and HRV systems. These pipes here are from a heat pump. Do not stand on any refrigeration pipe work. It is soft copper and it may bend and fracture the lines if you stand on it. Always watch for where people have run cables in the past because they can become trip hazards in the ceiling and you do not want to trip over and fall through the ceiling or break anything else in the roof space itself. This blue cable here looks like a Cat 5E data cable. So it's the older generation of data cables. Do not stand on these cables or crush them or it may compromise them. That's the same for any cable in the ceiling. These yellow pipes and ceilings are gas lines. Do not stand on them or kick them out of position. Keep an eye out for unsecured conduit work. This is a poor quality install and it's done by the fiber guys installing fiber cable inside here. It's not very secure at all and is prone to be knocked around and broken. On this top plate here, there's a couple of plumbing pipes. We do not want to stand on the top of these connections. When I'm talking about standing on materials, I'm also talking about not putting any body weight whatsoever on them. That is the same if you're crawling around in the roof space. A good way to get into tight spots is by putting a plank across the two trusses and sliding it along until you can get right into the corner down the end there. Cheers for watching.